All right, let's make this a really short part too. Sorry about the abrupt end of that. What I do now is I take, um, remember L times T sub O is equal to L sub O times T. Let's take the L and let's substitute in L sub O times the square root of one minus V squared over C squared. So that then becomes L sub O times the square root of one minus V squared over C squared times T sub O is equal to L sub O times T. Cancel out the L sub O and that's equal to T, is e and that gets us T is equal to T sub O times the square root of one minus V squared over C squared. And that's the formula for time dilation. So what that means is that if there's a rocket ship traveling at the speed of light, uh, no, no, pardon me, at one half the speed of light, it can't travel the speed of light, and it goes to Alpha Centauri and back, um, well, Alpha Centauri is 4.3 light years, so it'll take us 17.2 years to go to and fro from our standpoint. That's the T sub O would be 17.2, but the actual time experienced on board the rocket ship would be less. Okay, and I believe it would be by a factor of the square root of 3 over 2, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, and as the ship travels towards the speed of light, lengths contract towards an infinitesimal point. It never gets to the speed of light, but they contract to an inf towards an infinitesimal point, never getting there. And time contracts to no time passage, although never getting there. And so what Einstein discovered is that light is constant, whereas space and time is not. And that is a remarkable intuition. Thank you.